Good morning. Good morning, virtual world. Good morning, First Church. Here we are at the seventh day of February, 2021. Oh, how we thought a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, would we see this day. Let us go now. Let us go now with our hearts open, with our hearts lifted to our Holy One, our Redeemer in this moment. Alpha, Omega, giver of strength, sustainer of our strength, the clearer of our hearts and our minds, the connector of our communities, the awareness of the prayers, not only for others, but for ourselves, that we go forward in the name of our Heavenly Father, that we go forward in the name of the Alpha, the Omega, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit left here with us. As we go forward in our service, let us be aware of our own consciousness and connection. Let us be aware of community connection. Let us be aware of global connection. Let us be aware of the connector, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we pray in this day, in this moment, for all of us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Good morning, First Church. Happy Sunday on this February the 7th, the first Sunday of the month of February as we celebrate Black History Month all month long. Let's give God a hand just for being God because God is indeed good. 
We are excited you're here with us this morning. We celebrate your presence with us this morning. If you are a first time guest, we are extra celebratory this morning. So if you're with us for the first time on Facebook, we want you to identify yourself in the comment section so we can welcome you in Jesus' name. If you're on YouTube with us for the very first time in the chat, go ahead and introduce yourself so we can welcome you in Jesus' name with the love that Jesus freely gives each of us. Happy Sunday. God bless you. Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us now prepare ourselves for the gospel lesson. 
For those that can, please stand where you are. For those who are unable to stand, open your hearts to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, it is time to give church. Everybody at home say time to give. Well, everybody here can do that too. Time to give. <laughs> and we, we are thankful for the opportunity to be able to give back even just a portion of all the things that God has given to us. So this morning, we thank you in advance for your prayerful consideration of giving of tithes and offerings. We know that the work of the church does not stop even with a limited number inside the building, that the work is going on each day of the week, inside and outside, and we praise God for that. So there are multiple ways you can give. You can give through PayPal, through Vanco, through checks or money orders or credit cards. If you come to the church, and you wish to drop off an offering, Pastor Penn has said for a long time, she will meet you at the door with a smile. And she's even agreeing right there, yes indeed. So we, we give God the praise for each of you. It is now time to give. God bless you.
home is over Jordan. Deep river, Lord, I want to cross over into Camp Crown. Oh, don't you want to go to the gospel feast that promised land where all is peace? Oh, don't you want to go to the promised land, the land where Jordan, deep river, Lord, I want to cross over into camp ground. Oh, do you want to go to the gospel feet that promise? to go to the promised land, the land where all is peace. Deep river, my home is over Jordan. Yes, Lord, I want to cross over into camp ground. Amen. Good morning, First Church. We give God praise and glory for this awesome day. Um, earlier in the week, they said that we would have snow this weekend. But you know, God has his own ideas of what he's going to do. And I know every once in a while, he likes a good joke. And so I give him thanks and praise that the roads are smooth and easy and good to pass through. Before we get to the sermon this morning, I want to honor Black History Month. And so this morning, I just want to touch a little bit on Shirley Chisholm, just a tiny bit as we honor Black History Month. Shirley Chisholm, Shirley Chisholm, what a leader, what a woman. Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman to run for Congress and won. She was the first woman to run, black woman to run, or woman of color to run for the presidency. Shirley Chisholm made great strides for all of us. I stand on her shoulder this morning. One of the things I love that Shirley Chisholm said was, if you are not invited for, to the table, get your own folding chair and show up. So I've got my folding chair and I'm showing up. God be the glory. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for all those who have contributed to this great month, to the year, to every second. First, oh God, we honor you for my brother Carter, Carter Woodson, who felt it was noble to start the celebration of Black History Month week. 
it's turned into a month, and now we, I celebrate every day of my life. God, I thank you this morning for the saints of First United Methodist Church. I thank you this morning, oh God, for those who are behind the cameras and those that we can't see, those who are viewing us on whatever form of media is available to them. We ask you, God, to bless the readers and the prayer and all the music and everything that's gone on before my voice. We ask you to give them an extra, an extra, extra dose of your blessing today. Will you help us, oh God, that as we celebrate today, we celebrate your goodness and your mercy. As we get closer to the Lenten season, oh God, we find the significance in celebrating each and every day as if it is our last day. Thank you, O oh God, for the COVID vaccine, and thank you, O oh God, for COVID testing, and I thank you, O oh God, for those who come to our campus to help others in the name of Jesus. You're good God. You're awesome God, you're holy God, you're righteous God, and you know exactly what we need before we ask of it. Thank you, O oh God, for answering our prayers. Each and every day, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And so this morning, again, we have a bit of sad news. We all know Michelle Coleman, and Michelle lost her mother Friday morning. And so we ask her prayers for the family. Let's pray one for another as God has called us to. But this morning, I just want to ask you, have you been listening? Have you been listening? I listen to a radio show and he always says, use your third ear. Use your third one. That means you listen extra carefully. And so I want to ask you, are you listening? And have you been listening? I love the book of Isaiah because there's so much wisdom in the book of Isaiah, as it is in the entire Bible. History has a way of repeating itself, and I give God thanks for that. But you heard Isaiah chapter 40, verse 21, read this morning. And you heard those awesome words that our Father said to us. But I just want to ask you, have you, you know, when I was, I was talking to one of our members yesterday, and I said, how are you feeling? And they said, this has not been a good day. I felt it for her because I know what she was going through. She said, this has not been a good day. Have you ever had one of those days? And as we continue to talk, she said, as a matter of fact, this is not a good month. I'm not liking the month of February as I used to because she couldn't see Valentine's Day anymore. She just could see death. But have you had one of those times? Have you ever had that day, you know, one of those days when nothing seems to go right. From the beginning of the day to the ending of the day, everything seems to be working against you. Bad news in the morning and it didn't stop in the afternoon. Even when you got in your car, every stoplight turned red. And every chore you try to do goes slowly. If you had a headache, it became a migraine. If you had allergies, it flared up on that day. Have you ever had one of those days? The thing is, we all have. It is part of our human frailty. And even the best of Christians can have one of those days. 
but sometime one of those days spilled over into the next day and soon before you know it, you're having one of those weeks and if you're not careful, you have one of those months and if you don't watch yourself, the month will turn into a year and then years. And it seems as if no relief is in sight. You wonder if there is any light at the end of this long, dark tunnel. My sisters and brothers, it's so easy to lose hope. So easy. It's so easy for us to go to that dark place. I'm asking again, have you been listening? Israel had one of those days. In fact, they had a lot of them. Not only had they had one of those days or months or years, they had several of those generational times. So God let them be conquered and, and taken off into captivity. And there, there seems no end to the long, dark tunnel they were going in their, to, in their nation. And there was about they was about to lose all hope and find themselves someplace else. So God said to Israel, as you read Isaiah 40, 1 and 2, he said, comfort, oh comfort my people, say your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. Hallelujah. So what did Isaiah said? He said, hey, what's the matter with you folks? Have you been listening? Did you hear? Did they teach you anything in Sunday school? Did you pay attention in Sunday school? And when you got to church, were you listening? God is greater than anything in this world. God observed the earth from such a lofty perspective that we must look like grasshoppers sometime. God has all power and mighty power in everything. You know, sometimes kids, when they're playing, they step on grasshoppers but God is also able to bless us, like Greg said, to bless our socks off. Amen. Beyond belief. Amen. No one is like God in power and might, so just trust in God. You've been listening, have you? For those who wait on the Lord, they shall get stronger. Even when we think we're going down, if we wait on the Lord, we will renew our strength and we shall rise up with wings like eagles. Israel had heard that before at that time they were listening. They knew that God was the creator and greater than all the power that pushed them down. But God knew that they just needed a little reminder. I guess we need a little reminder right now. I guess God's people need to be reminded of these basic truths from time to time. So let me refresh your memory this morning as I look at our own county and I look at our own state, as I look at our own, our own nation and as I look around the world. Have you been listening? Have you heard? I'm sure you have. Didn't something tell you that God is greater? Did you know we were in a pandemic? Did you know that God is the one that created all there is? God is the one who ordered the stars and put them into place. He placed each one special where each one need to be. Did you realize we ought to be wearing masks so that we can receive healing? And we ought to go and get our vaccine so that we can get to where God wants us to get. Not back to where we used to be. When I hear folks said, so we can get back to normal. This is my normal. Amen? This is our normal right now. 
God is the one who designed everything from, from the start to the finish, all the laws of nature that governed them. God is the one who authorized life itself, and God observed the universe from an infinite high perspective. God is enthroned beyond the stars and observed the galaxies. And what more God sees the plans and the course of all of that from the smallest to the largest, God knows about it. God knows everybody's place and everyone's purpose in this vast universe. Can you believe that? And still God is great enough to take notice of you and to take notice of me and who we are that God should regard us. We're a small, small, small little flock, but God still know who we are right here at First Church. As a matter of fact, he said he knows every hair and our head. Not together, but each one of us individually. Did you know we were just a speck in this vast universe, yet God know each of us, us intimately? God is great indeed. He's awesome to be praised. Did you listen in Sunday school? <laughs> Didn't anyone tell you or did you understand that God is good? In greatness, God made the world, but then in goodness, he gave it to us to care for, and he gave us the abundance of fruits and vegetables and everything we needed. God gave us the beauty of nature not to be destroyed, but for us to enjoy. But we sing songs of hope and faith, but are we listening to what we're singing? We have sinned against God, my sisters and brothers. We have sinned against his goodness. And God doesn't get mad at us. He's not mad at us. He forgives us. And God was so good that he became one of us. God sent Jesus, the only begotten son of God, to live amongst us. And Jesus healed the sick and he fed the hungry. And he enlightened those in the darkness. He didn't have to, but he did because he's a good God. And if that wasn't enough, there is more. I've got a whole lot more I can share with you. Jesus could have just split. He could have left you. He didn't have to stay, but he stuck around long enough to die up on a cross for your sins and my sins. And he rose again to offer eternal life to any who would accept him as the savior of the world. And when he did leave to take over running the universe, he sent God's Holy Spirit to be with us so we would not be alone. God is indeed good. Are you listening? I know you've heard all this before, but are you really taking it in? We have all heard of God's greatness and we have all experienced God's goodness. We teach our children from the cradle that God is great and God is good when they say their grace. And we teach our children to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And we all learn all the, that all the children of the word, every little children, you red or yellow, black or brown, green, purple, whoever we are, that God loved the children of the world. But sometimes we lose sight of the reality when we're having trouble, we become short-sighted. We get caught up in our troubles. We lose sight of the fact that God is great and God is good and all God wants to do is help you and heal you and take you out of that problem situation. All we see in front of us is the trouble, our own trouble. The song said, trouble on my mind, I've got to cry sometimes. But let me tell you, when you trust and believe in God, you know that God's got your back and he's not going to let you go, but he will hold on to you. Let me hold on to you. You might not see it, but he's got you. So next time you have one of those days, just remember, 
and just say to yourself, Lord, I'm turning it over to you because, God, you're good. Your goodness and your mercy will endure forever and ever. The Almighty is greater than your problems. Amen. He's greater than any sickness. Hallelujah. He's greater than anything that can stand in our way. Thank you, Jesus. He's greater than whatever the world might throw at you. He's greater because he's just greater, because he's good. Remember and remind yourself of this truth and wait, wait on the Lord on, and be of good courage because he will strengthen your heart. Wait to see God's greatness and goodness revealed to you and you shall rise above your troubles like the eagle will rise above the wind and you shall be renewed and you shall run the race without getting tired. You shall walk. You won't get tired. You won't think. God's got you. In the name of the man that has blessed the socks off for you, in the name of the one that created this earth, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, in the name of all three in one, in the name of a God that will see us through to the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are listening, God. We hear you. We know, God, it's not going to be as long as it has been. And, God, we are patiently waiting. We're waiting because we're renewing our strength in you. We know it won't be like this forever because you've got us. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The songstress say, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Says, been so good. Been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. If you know about the goodness of Jesus this morning, why don't you bow your head with me? And even if you don't know, and this is the first time you're hearing about God's goodness, <laughs> I want you to bow your heads with me too. If you heard it before and you've been listening, but you've been doing your own thing, come join us. If you're not sure about even your today because you went to the doctor last week, you went to the doctor on Friday and you didn't get such good news, it's okay. God's got you. <laughs> He's got you. Come on, join us for prayer. If you're worried about COVID, COVID doesn't belong to you. God's got COVID. If you're worried about where your tomorrow might be, stop worrying. Listen, God's got you. Won't you pray with me? I remember my grandmother used to listen to those old preachers and they would say, just touch your radio, touch the television, pray with me. I'm going to ask you to believe deep down in your heart that God is real. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to touch a radio or TV. I'm just going to ask you to touch yourself where you need healing. And I'm going to ask you to believe like you've never believed in that God's got it and God's got it. Lord, I believe. That whatever we need, whatever we want, you've got it. And it might not come in our time, but it comes when you are ready. We might not be able to see healing, but healing is in your fingertips. We might not be able to understand the pain and the suffering that we go through, but God, you are a righteous God. And God, sometimes when I listen to my members' testimony, oh God, I know just how good you are because you've been good to me. Some of us, oh God, we have suffered all our lives. But every day becomes a new day. Hallelujah. 
Every day becomes a day of possibility. Every day becomes a day of healing because you have never given up on us. Every day becomes a day of a praiseworthiness. Thank you, oh God. Lord God, right now we open our mouths and we say thank you. We say thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you, O oh God, for putting food on our tables, the little things that we sometimes overlook because we're worried about the big stuff. We want to thank you for it right now. Thank you, O oh God, that during this time of COVID that we have a God we can turn to, a God of healing, a God of righteousness, a God of grace, and a God of mercy, a God that is able to hear us when nobody else can, a God that comes to us at night and whisper that, I got you, I'm with you. A God that is able to let us feel your presence close by so we know that you'll never leave us or forsake us. A God that let it rain and let the sun shine and the snow comes down and still, oh God. The cool weather, <laughs> the cool weather brings a breath of life to us. It's the kind of God you are. The God that say to us, it is well, it's okay, I've gone to prepare a mansion, I'll come again. And then we sing about in the sweet by and by, Lord God, thank you. This morning, oh God, every voice that is hearing us, every person that is looking at us, this team, this first church, everyone, oh God, that will listen later, and here later, we ask your God to bless them. Heal their broken hearts because, God, some are going through sadness. Some, oh God, are suffering because others have gone before them. Will you heal them? Will you let our light shine so they will see your good work and glorify you, hallelujah, hallelujah, who is in heaven? God, we thank you this day just for being God of our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen, and amen, and amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You deliver us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by word and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to the disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves this morning in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, of those on the airways, O oh God, and on those gifts of bread and these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world as we listen to you, O oh God, until Christ come in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours now and forever, almighty Father. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. 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 Please know that you can always stop by the church Mondays through Fridays. Let me correct that. Mondays through Saturdays. <laughs> you can stop by the church and you can uh, pick up a package of communion. We have them packaged and ready for you so you can stop by. Stop by the front office door or the on Saturdays the side where the wedding chapel is. We appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. And so tomorrow, um, so we appreciate all that you do. Tomorrow we'll be here. Tomorrow we'll be here. Donna Lee, you'll be here, won't you? I'll be here. And um, we're testing tomorrow. If you haven't been tested, come get tested. And so we want you to be healthy. We want you to be healthy. We're hoping to begin test uh, vaccination on the 22nd, the 23rd, I'm sorry, the 23rd of this month. We're hoping to begin to uh, do vaccines here. And you have to call the register with the county in order to be on board. Amen. We're excited about that. We, we're not going to stop testing. We won't stop testing. We'll be doing both. And you know, this is, a, this is an honor. This is an honor. It's a privilege that God has allowed us to do, and we do it boldly, boldly for Jesus Christ and for our community. We hold absolutely nothing back, but we give everything. I'll see you in five minutes, in five minutes on fellowship time. You be there because I'll be there. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious God, right now we come before your holy presence and we thank you for the service, oh God. Thank you for this worship time. Oh God, thank you for how you just spilled over into us so we can spill over into others. And now, my sisters and brothers, I implore you to go in peace, knowing that God is with you. Allow God to work through you. Be good to someone because God has always been good to you because you're a good listener. Amen? Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be upon you now and forevermore. Amen.